From the vantage point of 2016, it may not be easy to appreciate just what a trailblazer Norman Kwong was. Remember, when he was born in Calgary, Canada was under the Chinese Exclusion Act, which forbade the immigration of people from China to Canada. He joined the CFL just one year after Chinese Canadians won the right to vote. When he joined the Edmonton Eskimos, he broke a color barrier. Every reel is the one shattered by Johnny Bright or Roly Miles. He joked that he was the lemon icing between two chocolate cookies, but he remembered years later that other players on the field from other teams called him Chink. He was a fighter on the field and off, setting CFL records that stood years and years after his retirement from active play. He had a shelf of Grey Cup rings and a Stanley Cup ring to go with them from his time as co-owner of the Calgary Flames. By the time he became Lieutenant Governor, the idea of a Chinese Canadian in such a position no longer seemed shocking or revolutionary, and that's perhaps because of the amazing work that Norman Kwong did as a cultural ambassador. Around the time he became Lieutenant Governor, I spoke to people from Edmonton's Chinese community who'd grown up here during his time with the Eskimos about what they remembered about Normie Kwong, the China Clipper. They told me what it was like to grow up as a Chinese kid in Edmonton in the 1950s, to be beaten up after school, to be mocked, to be called racist names. When Normie Kwong took the field, they had a hero, not just a role model, but somebody who played the coolest of games, football. Somebody who played with Jackie Parker and Johnny Bright. Somebody who made them proud to be Chinese in a way they'd never known to feel proud before. So when we remember Norman Kwong and his lifetime of service to the people of Alberta as a businessman, as a sportsman, as Lieutenant Governor, I think we need to remember his courage, his charm, his wit, his charisma, the grace he brought to his office. But most importantly of all, the grace he taught generations of Canadians about what it meant to be a real Albertan.